I have a few things that need to meet the capacitor bank today. I'm going to start out with these cold cathode fluorescent lamp tubes that I recovered from a totally defective 17-inch LCD monitor, which I decided to take apart as opposed to shooting it with the air cannon because, well, LCD monitors just aren't very much fun to shoot with an air cannon. They don't do much. So it got taken apart and I will take my cat bank to these long, thin little tubes. These are uh, maybe a little more than a sixteenth in diameter. They could be three thirty seconds. They're certainly less than an eighth and uh, they're over a foot long. Let's hook one up, see what it does. Let's proceed to dump 70 microfarads worth of capacitors charged to 6400 volts into this little cold cathode fluorescent lamp. Charging, charged, and fire. puff of smoke and nothing more. Disappointing. On really close examination, it turns out that the tube actually did uh, micro crack all the way along it from the discharge and it actually broke in the middle. I was hoping for more but oh well. Here's a little macro video footage of uh, exactly what happened to that uh, glass tube. The bits and pieces that remain are uh, very, very fragile. They're micro-cracked everywhere, as you can see. Really need to try another one of these to see if they're uh, any good or not, let's see what number two does. Charging, charged, and fire. And again, nothing impressive, a little flash, tiny bit of smoke. About 500 volts is left on the cat bank too. These aren't completely discharging it, so unplug for safety. Short the cap bank for safety. Voltmeter reads zero. I've switched to a clear 60 watt incandescent light bulb since I'm not getting anywhere really on good pops today. Uh, charging. Charged, and fire. I think these light bulbs are just better off in the microwave. This time I have a small circuit board that came out of the same LCD monitor that gave me the uh, unimpressive little fluorescent tubes of a couple of minutes ago. This one I'm going to use the chicken stick to make the connection to the cap bank. Charging, charged, and let's go.
lost connection. Stop for a minute here. Uh, this board can't take much more abuse, but I'm going to give it more abuse anyway. Here goes. Yeah, that'll do. I don't think there's much left on there. We'll get a better look at the carnage in a moment. The underside of the board was largely ground plane, but it still took a fair bit of uh, damage from that abuse. Here's a view of the top side of that little circuit board. One chip has a hole blown out of the center, and the larger uh, electrolytic capacitors popped. A whole bunch of uh, surface mount components are either vaporized and missing, or very badly fried and still partly there. Here's a macro video look of the top of the largest electrolytic capacitor that was on that board. You can see the paper fur from inside the capacitor. Here's just a random look around the board, uh, macro video style. A nice crater in that chip. <laughs> 